so good morning i guess it's late morning i just wanted to do another video because i had some things on my heart that i want to talk about and i'm i know i'm looking a hot mess gotta wash these locks i don't know if i want to get them recolored or what but this color is like getting washed out and stuff but anyway it's a beautiful day it's raining um almost the first day of spring so anyway um and yeah, I can get on here and look like a mess because I'm not really here to impress anybody. Like I said, like if people watch these videos, cool, if not cool, whatever, you know, I do know at some point in time, my daughters will watch this, these videos. And, you know, this is really um, serving as lessons for them. Um, and yes, I'm driving, but I have, you know, obviously I'm not looking at the camera. I'm paying very much attention. Um, so yeah, today what I wanted to talk about was um, how I'm noticing, and I'm sure like, you know, many people have noticed how, um, I'm going to say they're haters or, I don't know, like for me, it's always been people that I have had relationships with, people that are supposed to love me and care about me, um, but I already know, you know, at this point, I know that these people, you know loved me and cared about me as much as they could use me so you know but I'm pretty sure many other people probably all other people that notice this notice that it comes from people that are supposed to love and care about them or people that they've had close relationships with but you ever notice how you know someone because if you're somebody like me like you know you like to uplift people you want to see everybody happy you know you want everybody to feel good about themselves and you know in my relationships, friendships, family relationships, whatever kind of relationships I have, I always try to uplift people, uplift them to make them feel as great as I think that they are and I, as great as they, I feel like they should think of themselves. Like, I think everybody should think highly of themselves. Um, that is until you show me that you're the scum of the earth and then, you know, then you shouldn't feel highly of yourself because you are a low vibrational loser. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I always want people to feel very highly of themselves, to feel great, to feel like they look great, you know, just always want to uplift people because, you know, when people feel happy, then, you know, they behave differently when they're, you know, satisfied with themselves and they feel confident, they, they behave differently and it's just a different energy put out into the world. Um, but um, for some reason, for a lot of the women I'm gonna say females that I've tried this with family members friends whatever that I've tried to uplift and you know make them feel good it, it just hasn't really worked hold on yeah sorry I was at McDonald's ordering my frappe which I probably should not have but you know these girls of mine they drive me crazy and I just wanted to treat myself and then just take a ride so I can you know get this off my chest anyway um like I was saying like um, you know, for some reason, the women in my former life, you know, the, the friendships and relationships that I've had, family, friends, whatever, I've tried to uplift them. I've always, you know, spoke highly of them to them, you know, but it just never seemed to work to build their confidence. Um, and I just never knew why. I never understood why, because, you know, I always felt like these women were beautiful. I always felt like they were smart and, you know, deserving of, you know, to be treated like queens I've always you know thought highly of them but see that's the thing about me and it's you know it's a good thing and a bad thing because you know if well in the past if you were in my life I always thought highly of you I always you know gave everybody the benefit of the doubt I definitely always gave people more credit than they absolutely deserved so you know I, anytime that I would have a relationship with a woman like I said family friends whatever um I always thought that they were very beautiful, very smart. I always, you know, thought highly of them. I would not have a friendship or relationship with somebody that I did not think highly of. Like, that's fake and that's just not me. Um, but like I said, like, no matter how much I tried to uplift these women, tell them how great I thought they were, how, you know, whatever, it just never seemed to work. They just, you know, their confidence just never got to the level where, you know, where I thought it should be. And, you know, I guess that's kind of, arrogant of me to think that you know they should be confident because I say that they should be whatever I, I don't know like it was just, it was always in good faith that I just wanted you know them to feel great about them I wanted them to feel as great about themselves that I that I felt about them you know you know 
I realize that that's probably not realistic and it's probably even arrogant of me to think that I can just, you know, coax someone into feeling great about themselves or whatever. But anyway, it just, it just never really happened. It was just like, no matter what, you know, it just seemed like they maintained this small level of low self-esteem or, you know, lack of confidence um, that there was, that I could not help. Um, so that would have me a little bit sad, you know, like, because like I said, I might not have always had the best confidence, but I've always had a high self-esteem. And I don't really think like that's the same thing. Um, confidence is more outwards, I believe. You know, when you're confident, you show that confidence to other people. Other people can see that you're confident. Self-esteem is more about inner self. Um, it's more about how you feel about yourself and how you show yourself. Um, so I've always had a high self-esteem. Um, I've always felt or thought highly of myself. Um, I've always known that I, you know, was smart. You know, I had good things about me. You know, I had some great things going on for myself. So I've always had that. Um, but I didn't always have the highest confidence. Like I wasn't, you know, I didn't show my self-esteem to the outer world. Like um, now I do, but I didn't always have that. Um, but um, I kind of lost my train of thought. I didn't know where I was going with that. Um, anyway, um, so like I said, um, you know, I, I've pretty much always had, um, high self-esteem, but it's not the confidence, but, you know, as I got older, you know, my confidence did increase and it would be more obvious to the outside world. And I guess that would make these women in my life feel even, a feel a lower sense of confidence or a lower self, sense of self-esteem. And that was never my intention to do that, but I'm going to be me. I'm not going to be, my growth is not going to be stifled by somebody else. Like that's just not going to happen. I'm never going to allow that to happen. Um, because I have to live my life. This is my life. I can't live my life for other people. You know, I get up every single day and I take every breath that I take for my life, for my life force, period. Like the breath that I breathe, breathe you know, fills up my lungs, not anybody else's. So I'm just not going to stifle myself or, you know, inhibit my growth as a person, as a professional, as anything because of somebody else, you know, like my self-esteem and my confidence and every, anything and everything that I am comes from God. It doesn't come from other people. So why should I let other people stop that? That's ridiculous to me. Um, but like I said, you know, the more my confidence grew, it was like the more they felt competition, I guess. Like, I guess they felt like, you know, my growth was, you know, competition to them. And it never was. It, it, like I said, it's never, my growth is never about anybody else. It's just about who I am as a person and about, you know, the gifts that God gave me, the person that God made me. I'm not going to just not be who I am or who God wants me to be because it bothers other people. It's never about other people. It's all, it's always about me. And, you know, maybe that sounds selfish. I'm, maybe it does. I really don't care because it is selfish. You know, I, I'm living my life. So I'm going to make it about me. It, it, it just, it makes sense to me. Um, but like I said, you know, I felt like the more my self-esteem grew, the more my confidence became apparent to the outside world. It just came off as if these women viewed me as competition now. Because, you know, when my, self, when my confidence, because like I said, I've always had self-esteem, but self-esteem is more about inner. It's more inner. You know, you don't really project self-esteem to the outside world. You project confidence to the outside world. Um, but when my self-esteem was, you know, still, it, w it was healthy, but my confidence was very low. There was no competition. Everything was all good. You know, um, their confidence seemed to be pretty high, which I know, which was a lie, you know, but, you know, well, maybe not even if their confidence was high, but, you know, they just didn't seem like they had low confidence. They didn't seem in uncomfortable with themselves um, when my confidence was low um but you know once my confidence started to grow it was just like oh um now we're competing or she thinks she this or she thinks she that and it's like I'm just growing as an individual you know I'm every year I get older I you know every experience that I I get go through you know 
just life experience, period, it could either build your confidence and it should build your confidence or it can destroy your confidence if you let it. But I don't, I don't let things or I don't let anything destroy my confidence because it was given to me from God. Um, but I'm saying all that to say um, that I, I, I noticed that once I separated myself from these women, um, for whatever reason, you know, I know I separated myself from these people. But, you know, of course, they come up with their own story about why I separated myself from these people. Um, but, you know, I noticed that once I separated myself from these people, you know, it seems to me like now they have all the confidence in the world. Very confident, you know, very outwardly confident, you know, very sure of themselves. And this is just to me, like, I already know this is all just, um, it's fake. It's not real, you know, um, because you, you, you build confidence, you know, from your own inner light, your own inner self. It's my bird. Um, so, you know, the confidence that I see these, these women having, I know it's fake. It's, you're not fooling me. Um, because I remember being there and trying to love you and coax you and compliment you and support you into being confident and it never worked. But now that I've separated myself, now all of a sudden you're confident. So is it because you have, you know, all of a sudden tapped into your own light and, you know, have built this confidence? I don't think so. Hold on. I'm back. Um, so, um, you know, now that I'm separated or I'm no, no longer a part of your life, now you have all the confidence in the world. So like I said, is it because, you know, you've learned how to tap into your own light and, you know, love yourself enough to build your confidence? Or is it because this quote unquote competition is not around anymore. Um, I already know the answer to that. Um, because confidence can make you a very beautiful person. Yeah, um, confidence can make you a very beautiful person. Like, what I mean by that is like, you know, I know everyone has heard the saying, like even the most unattractive person um, can be very can be seen as very attractive and very magnetic because of their confidence and that's the truth you know so when you um you know are attractive when you do have some great things going for yourself as far as you know um you know beauty brown no i don't i look like a mess right now <laughs> and you know it's not about me trying to brag or nothing like that like that's just not even about it it's just you know facts you know what i mean like um when you have you know, what's considered beauty when you have brains, so you're successful. Um, when you have stability, you know, when you have a lot of positive attributes about yourself and on top of that, you're confident. It's like, you're like the full package. Like, you know, you're going to find a lot of people trying to compete with you because, you know, there are not very many people out here. Well, there are, you know, but a lot of people aren't the full package. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I just I just say that, you know, I am the full package. I'm the I have the beauty the brains, the success, the stability, you know, hard worker, self-starter, independent, great mother, you know, I'm the full package, you know, the pretty much only thing I don't have is a partner in life as far as a mate or whatever, but that's not because I don't have what it takes. It's just simply because I haven't met that person that God has for me yet um and you know I know I've made mistakes in my past as far as relationship is concerned but I I know I'm the full package like it's just point blank and you know sometimes people have the brains but they don't have the beauty or sometimes they have the beauty but they don't have the brains or sometimes they have five things but they're missing three things like you know I I feel like I've worked on myself enough to the point where I have pretty much everything um to be in a success, to just be successful at life, and that's what I am. I am successful at life. Um, you know, not having a mate is not does not mean that I'm not successful at life. That just means I'm not, I don't have a mate. That's just all it is. That's just how I see it. Um, but you know, that's another thing to you know to 
for people to compete with. It's just like, even though I'm single, I'm still considered, you know, somebody to compete with because I am single because I choose to be because I haven't, you know, met the right person. I'm not single because I have to be. I don't have to be. Um, but I've worked way too hard and I have way too much to lose and I have children that look up to me to just choose any old person just to say that, you know, everything, you know, I am complete now, you know, with a man. I'm like, no. Um, but like I said, you know, when I separate myself, now everybody has this confidence. And like I said, I already know the real, like, it's, it's fake. Um, and I say it's fake because if I inserted myself back into these people's lives, I don't think that their confidence that they have, you know, would be as apparent or as open anymore. I think, I don't think that, you know, they would, and I don't want, I wouldn't want them to either, you know, but I don't think that they would like shrink back up into this insecure person and I wouldn't want them to, you know, but I don't think that, you know, they would be as loud and as proud with their confidence as they are right now that I'm not around. And, you know, this might come up as arrogant. That's not my intention, but this is just facts. You know, the, my truth, I'm going to say, this is my truth. This is what I see. Um, and this is based on not just, oh, I, I knew this person for a couple of years. No, this is people that I've known pretty much my whole life. You know, some people I've known my whole life and some people I've known pretty much my whole life. Um, so it's not just some observation that I, that, um, you know, came about after a couple of years of knowing somebody. No, this is, this is 20, 30 plus years of knowing people. Um, so like I said, I don't think that this confidence would be as loud and as proud if I came back on the scene and, you know, came back around and, you know, I have no intention on doing that, but, you know, for shits and giggles, I guess I could, but I, I, I don't really feel the need to do that because like I said, I've always wanted these women to be confident and be loud and proud and, you know, you know, have a lot of a strong self-esteem and love themselves and feel like they're beautiful, they're smart and worthy. I've always wanted that for them anyway. I just don't understand that. Why is it that it takes for me to separate myself and quote unquote shrink off somewhere in hermit mode and hide myself? Because that's pretty much what I've been doing for the past couple of years. But I haven't been hiding myself because I'm hiding from other people. I've been hiding myself because I'm hiding my my plans and my goals and my accomplishments from other people because you know when people find out that you're doing some doing things they will do everything they can to stop you or shade you or you know make it harder for you so that's what I've really been hiding I haven't been hiding myself because I don't need to hide myself um but I have been hiding my plans and the things that I've been working on for you know my life and for my children's life because you know people send a lot of negative energy or they'll you know try to get you involved in crap that'll take your attention off of what you're working on so that's really what I've been doing um but at this at the end of the day like since I've been you know doing that and I also have you know went through a spiritual awakening and I've been you know getting getting a closer relationship with God and just trying to focus on what God's plan for my life is so that's really what I've been doing. But after all this time of doing that, I have no intention or no desire to insert myself back into these people's lives. Like, I'm just like on a whole nother level now. So, you know, there is really nothing that I have in common with these people. And, you know, it, I'm going to say it makes me feel a certain kind of way. Um, that this is what it took for you all to see yourselves as beautiful is for me to shrink off or whatever whatever it is that you all think I've been doing over the past couple of years because nobody really knows what I've been doing you know that I can only assume that they think that um because of you know the experience that I had with with my ex and you know his abuse and you know his attempts at sabotage and everything like these people know about that um maybe they assume that you know finally somebody knocked me off of my high horse and now I'm you know in the cave somewhere crying and licking my wounds maybe that's what they think it is um that's not what it is at all you know and it's not maybe that's what they think that's what they think because that's what they've said to me you know 
So it took for you all to believe that some abusive relationship finally knocked me off of my high horse. So now my confidence isn't so high. So now it's my time to shine now. It's always been your time to shine. Like, you know, everybody can shine. I, I don't understand why I had to, my light had to be extinguished or, you know, if you all, that's what you all think anyway. Um, I don't understand why my light had to be extinguished for you all to feel like now you can shine. Now everybody can shine. There's, there's, you know, there's many stars in the sky. There's only, there's not just one star in the sky. There's many stars. The sun is the brightest, biggest star in the sky, but yet there are still other stars out there that shine just as, you know, as well. Like, you know, there, there doesn't have to be only one star. There's plenty of stars, you know, but if that that's what made you all feel like you can come out and shine now because now my light has been put out that makes me feel a certain kind of way because it's just like I've never wanted I you know I've always wanted for everyone to shine I wanted everybody to feel comfortable and everybody start to shine so to speak always I've always wanted that you know whether they realize that or not that's what I've always wanted but it's very clear that they never wanted that for me and they found comfort and vindication, I guess, in assuming that my light had went out. So now that my light is out, now I can shine. Well, my light has never been out. It never went out. Like, it never dimmed. It never faltered. It never did any of those things, you know? Never. Never. So, like I said, that's why I say that this confidence that you all have is fake. Because if it took for somebody else's confidence to be stomped out, you know, with, with, that's what you all assume anyway. But if, you know, if it took for somebody else's confidence to be stomped out in order for you to find your confidence, your confidence is fake. It's not real. Because, you know, if, like I said, if I went and showed back up on the scene with my light and my confidence that never faltered yours is going to start to falter yours is going to dim and it's like nobody else should make your confidence go anywhere nothing that anybody says or does is going to lower your confidence if you are truly a confident person on your own because it didn't come from somebody it came from God and that's what I'm saying you know, these gifts that we have, these characteristics that we have, you know, all this stuff comes from God, but so many people just don't understand that. They really honestly think that it comes from things or people or, you know, money or whatever. It doesn't. It comes from God. And as long as you can't recognize that, then it can be taken away at any given time by any given person. It's, it's just, it's sad because... This is why people are so materialistic because they really honestly think that their self-esteem and their confidence and their the way they feel about themselves comes from things. And maybe it does, but it shouldn't. It really shouldn't, you know. All, you know, you should give all glory and all praises and all credit to God because that's where it comes from. Or did you think you were created by a $100 bill? You know? seriously like did you think that you were made by a hundred dollar bill you were you were you know created in God's image um you were created by God so everything that you are everything that you are not well I'm not gonna say everything that you're not because that could be from your own doing um but everything that you that you are comes from God so um So to sit there and find some sort of solace or vindication or happiness out of assuming that somebody else's gifts from God has been taken away. That's just, it's just not the way. That's really not the way to go. You know, and that's just the easy way to end up um, in some sort of depression. Because as soon as you see that this person that you think has finally been knocked off of their high horse when you finally see that person you see that no they haven't 
And that's going to send you spiraling down once you because you're going to realize that you know this confidence that you think you had was not real. It just wasn't. And it's mess, messed up. It's really messed up. It's messed up to me. Like I said, it makes me feel some kind of way because it messed up to me that people take solace and vindication and happiness in what they assume was my downfall. So it's sad to me because like these are people that are supposed to love me and care about me and be happy that, you know, these situations that I've been through did not destroy me, but these are the people that are happy because they think that this situation that, or, you know, the situations that I've been in have destroyed me. But, and these are also the same people that have watched me go through multiple devastating situations and they watched as they did not destroy me. But this last one, you know, was probably the harshest one. So I guess that they thought, oh yeah, this is the straw that's going to break the camel's back. Yeah. This is the one that's going to take her ass out. Yeah. She's going to be knocked off her high horse and yeah, no, not even this one. Sorry. Nope. If anything, it, you know, it, it, it was a nuisance in my life for a long time, not for a long time, but for a couple of years. Um, it did cause a lot of difficulties and discomfort. Yeah. I, you know, cried. I was depressed, all those things because of the things that I was going through. But at the end of the day, this was, you know, a learning lesson. It, it really worked out in my favor because it, it taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about, you know, my flaws and the things I needed to work on. Um, it taught me a lot about people and their actions and, you know, but most importantly, it brought me much, much closer to God. That, that was probably not probably that was, that was the best thing that came out of all of this was that my relationship to God is like so much stronger. Um, and just my relationship with myself is so much stronger. So, I mean, this, this, like I said, this, this was the harshest lesson, but it was the best lesson. So I really hate to be the bearer of bad news, but yeah, no, I have, my confidence has not been knocked down. I would say that I'm still on my high horse. I, I never got off of my high horse, you know. The road that the horse that we were on, me and the horse were on, got really, really, really bumpy and, you know, potholes and all type of stuff. But I was, I've never got off of my high horse, hun. You know, <laughs> it is crazy. Like, oh, wow. Like, y'all really wanted to see me destroyed out here. Because, you know, once I'm destroyed and I'm wiped out, then, then you know, now they can be on top. And it's like, it, it's not a competition. There is no top and bottom and all that. Like, everybody can be on top. Everybody can shine. Everybody can be the best. Everybody can. There's room for everybody. But y'all felt the need to kick me while I, while you thought I was down. You know, shove me down. Laugh at me. Y'all, y'all felt the need to do that to build yourself up so now you can be on the top. Well, I mean, okay go ahead you know because like I said if if this is what it takes to get to the top then I will gladly stay at the bottom because I, I don't want to sit there and take happiness or solace in somebody else's pain or what I perceive as their you know destruction so that I can feel on top like no I will gladly stay on the bottom yeah thanks I'll, I'll stay on the bottom because I'm just not interested in you know benefiting off of somebody else's pain I'm just not um, but yeah, I'm going to end this video, but you know, like I said, it's not about me being arrogant. However, I will say this, um, don't get too comfortable. I have no intention on inserting myself back into these people's lives, but the work that I'm doing, the plans that I have is going to put me in a place where they're not going to have a choice, but to see me and see how good I'm doing. So prepare to be knocked off of the top the top because that's where you all think you are now or that's where you all now are now and you you know you feel very good and exalted and you're so confident and yeah I'm I'm this and I'm that yeah well enjoy it while you can enjoy it while you can 
Have a good day.